So this is a QNAP uh, TS439. Uh, many of them in the series are very similar on the inside and the outside. So what's happening with this one is I'm pushing the power button and nothing is happening at all. And if we spin around the back, if I just unplug the power, uh, you'll see that um, the fan on the back here, uh, when I hit the power button, will actually spin up a little rotation and then stop, maybe two rotations. And then this fan may do a slow rotation, but then the button will stop responding. So the first thing you should do is just um, flip your hard drives out just pull them out, but leave them sitting in the drive bay. You don't want to pull them all the way out. Uh, and if you do, make sure you order them with a pen or a sticker or something so you don't get the order wrong when you put them back in. If you do get the order wrong when you put them back in, you'll find you'll lose your RAID and lose your data. Still not doing anything. So it's either the motherboard or the power supply. So we're going to look at the power supply. I'll show you very briefly how to do that. And we'll um, go from there. All right, there are three case screws. There's one. Um, on either side in the top and then there are three power supply screws uh, along the uh, the top and center as well All right to get the lid off we basically just push on the back of the case and we just grip on the side of the case like this and we push forwards and that will actually slide off as such Now once inside you'll see you've got the power supply here. There are um, two screws at the back and Basically, you unplug it from the motherboard, so I find the best way, again, is just to sort of ease that out. There's a little clip on the back that you've sort of got to push with your thumb as well, so get under that and squeeze it, and that'll pull out. And inside, these two will be connected together as well, which is your hard drive power, so you just, again, clip that clip up, pull that apart, and that'll allow you to slide the power supply out. Now it's interesting because this is not a standard power supply. You can see that uh, that's a standard ATX power supply, but that is uh, actually for your hard disk. So instead of having all the standard uh, eSATA stuff on it, it's got it all running through one connector. So to test this, the uh, power supply, you can see here we've got the green wire and a black wire. Um, I think it's 15 and 16. And you can see here that um, if we bridge those two, and all I've got is a paper clip here, and uh, chopped it off and um, just put it to these two uh, connectors here and bent it over the edge that's going to keep those two shorted out and that's actually going to power up the unit so as long as that's connected like that uh, this is going to be powered up and we can test so with our meter set to um, DC voltage um, you can just put a battery across the rail if you want to you know test that it's going to give you uh, yeah, 1.6 there we go that's a, a battery let's uh, put on we basically got to put our black uh, earth onto an earth let's go and pick a Earth, that's an earth, and we'll pick a, oh, let's pick a three volt rail. Bit of a knack to holding this, I'll just turn on the power. Oh, yeah, not a good thing. All right, testing one of the uh, hard drive rails, we'll go black there to a red there. Here we go. Oh. Briefly got a voltage, and then it's dropped right off. Now, if we just have a bit of a look into the back of this uh, power supply here, when I first turn the power on, you'll see that it spins for a sec as well and then just comes to a halt. That's usually a fairly good uh, sign. Something's wrong internally with the power supply. Okay, so here's the new power supply that I, um, I purchased. Uh, I just bought it from an Australian reseller. This one here is um, the old power supply. And before you put a power supply into uh, any machine, it's good just to check the specs are about the same. So you can see here we have the specs uh, for one power supply. So we've got a, a 14 amp, wow, that's high, 3.3 uh, volt um, power rail. This one has a 6 amp rail, so already that's a bit different. Um, then it has a 12 amp, 5 volt rail. So this replacement power supply is actually not quite as, as uh, gutsy as this old one that's come out. So we just do everything in reverse here. We just uh, basically put the power supply in, and I'm going to hook it up and fire up the unit before I actually put the case screws on. It's just an old um, wives' tale, I guess, that if you put the <laughs> case back on before you test it, um, it won't work. So that just clips into the hard drive, and then we've got our motherboard power here. So we'll plug that in. Uh, give it a bit of squeezy, squeezy. Okay, plug the power in. Just uh, turn the master switch on. And there you have it, system booting. So that's come back to life automatically because it's done a recover from power failure where it's automatically um, powered itself back on. So that is worth noting. You want to probably have your power unplugged um, or switched off at the wall before you plug it in. 
uh, and it might turn itself on automatically, but we'll plug that in and check it works. And there we go. Devices are operational. We have a RAID 5 back up and running. Finally put the lid back on. Just goes on a sort of rough kind of way. So just a quick look inside the old power supply and you can see here it's a very densely packed power supply. Um, it's also got these uh, like heat uh, dissipation um, heat sinks as well and you can see that that's sort of like butted right on top of the, the power supply here and it's not a very big power supply considering what it's powering. Um, and it's not very happy by the looks of it here either. Um, so you can see that uh, you could get to the components and start testing your caps and things but I just found that it was going to be too much of a pain in the ass. And look, to be honest, when you consider what it's powering and the fact that I've had stuff sitting on top of this drive as well, um, it's probably got hot. And that's something to note and learn from this is don't put stuff on top of your QNAP uh, because generally, you know, your, your heat dissipation is probably not all of it, but a fair chunk of it will be coming out of the top of the case given that heat rises and there's all these heat sinks here and then you've got that on top, metal on top there and metal here as well. Yes, there's a little fan in it that's on the back here, but it's not really the best of fans in the world. Um, I would prefer to have seen a bigger power supply in this, but fingers crossed it works.